Now I am sitting here. I am totally unable to remember myself, and I have no idea of it. But I have heard about it. A friend of mine proved to me today that it is possible. Then I thought about it and became convinced that if I could remember myself long enough, I would make fewer mistakes and I would do more things that are desirable. Now I wish to remember, but every rustle, every person, every sound distracts my attention and I forget. Before me is a sheet of paper on which I deliberately wrote it in order that this paper should act for me as a shock for remembering myself. But the paper has proved of no help. So long as my attention is concentrated on this paper, I remember. As soon as my attention becomes distracted, I look at the paper, but I cannot remember myself. I try another way. I repeat to myself, I wish to remember myself. But this does not help either. At moments I notice that I repeat it mechanically, but my attention is not there. I try in every possible way. For instance, I sit and try to associate certain physical discomforts with self-remembering. For example, my corn aches, but the corn helps only for a short time. Later this corn begins to be felt purely mechanically. Still I try all possible means, for I have a great desire to succeed in remembering myself. In order to know how to proceed, I would be interested to know who has thought as I have and who has tried in a similar way. Supposing I have not yet tried in this way. Supposing till now I have always tried directly by the mind. I have not yet tried to create in myself associations of another nature as well. Associations which are not only those of the thinking center. I wish to try. Maybe the result will be better. Maybe I shall understand more quickly about the possibility of something different. I wish to remember. At this moment, I remember. I remember by my mind. I ask myself, do I remember by sensation as well? As a matter of fact, I find that by sensation, I do not remember myself. Sometimes a man is lost in revolving thoughts which return again and again to the same thing, the same unpleasantness, which he anticipates and which not only will not but cannot happen in reality. These forebodings of future unpleasantnesses, illnesses, losses, awkward situations often get hold of a man to such an extent that they become waking dreams. People cease to see and hear what actually happens. And if someone succeeds in proving to them that their forebodings and fears were unfounded in some particular instance, they even feel a certain disappointment, as though they were thus deprived of a pleasant expectation. Very often a man leading a cultured life in cultured surroundings does not realize how big a role fear plays in his life. He is afraid of everything, afraid of his servants, afraid of the children of his neighbor, the porter in the entrance hall, the man selling newspapers around the corner, the cab driver, the shop assistant, 
A friend he sees in the street and tries to pass unobtrusively so as not to be noticed. And in their turn, the children, the servants, the hall porter, and so on, are afraid of him. And this is so in ordinary, normal times, but at such times as we are going through now, this all-pervading fear becomes clearly visible. It is no exaggeration to say that a great part of the events of the last year are based on fear and are the results of fear. Unconscious fear is a very characteristic feature of sleep. Man is possessed by all that surrounds him because he can never look sufficiently objectively on his relationship to his surroundings. He can never stand aside and look at himself together with whatever attracts or repels him at the moment. And because of this inability, he is identified with everything. This too is a feature of sleep. You begin a conversation with someone with the definite aim of getting some information from him. To attain this aim, you must never cease to watch yourself, to remember what you want, to stand aside and look at yourself and the man you are talking to. But you cannot do it. Nine times out of ten, you will become identified with the conversation. And instead of getting the information you want, you will tell yourself things you had no intention of telling. People have no idea how much they are carried away by fear. This fear is not easily defined. More often than not, it is a fear of awkward situations. Fear of what another man may think. At times, this fear becomes almost a mania. To understand, one must know oneself. <laughs>